Hey everybody, Teching here, and we're back once again to discuss some very weird and unusual Paramecia Devil Fruits in the One Piece story. Um, you know, as opposed to discussing normal and ordinary Devil Fruit powers. You know, they're magical fruits that give you superpowers, so even, like, with the most boring ones, you still are, you know, rather interesting. But, uh, you know, there are some that are a little stranger than others, like, um, okay, well, Law's not a very good example because we already discussed him on here, but, uh, Kanemon's Fruit. We don't know the name of Kanemon's Fruit, but it's just, like, it may is just to, you know, put something on your head and then you summon clothing. So, like, the clothing clothing fruit or whatever. That's pretty normal when you compare it to Laws or Tamagos or, or Beiges who we're talking about today. You know, that's a segue. Um, it's also, like, a common rule in the One Piece world that the Supernova's Devil Fruits are a little bit more unusual than the others. Not all of them. Like, uh, Kid's Fruit is not really that unusual. It's just the ability to, like, you know, control magnetic forces, so that's not unusual. But all the other ones are pretty weird, you know? like, you know, uh, Drake has the power of dinosaurs with an ancient zone. That's kind of not common in the One Piece world. We had Bonnie's fruit, which controls time. Law's fruit, for the longest time, we were like, what is this thing? Can, can you remember, if you were reading One Piece back during when Law first showed up, do you remember when he first pulled out his, like, room and shambles? You're sitting there wondering, like, what the hell? You know, what is this fruit? What could it possibly be called? Um, and then we get to Beiges, who's also was very weird, uh, because the first time we see him exhibit this fruit, he's walking alone on Sabaondi. The Marines surround him like, you know, freeze right there. You're surrounded. You know, it's like 30 to one. And he has that cool scene where he's smoking a cigar and he's like, eh, eh. you guys are the ones that are surrounded. Then out of nowhere, freaking cannonballs just shoot out of his body. They explode. And then a drawbridge pops out of his chest and horsemen on freaking uh, holding pole arms and guns come out and start shooting people. And like, what the fuck? What is this? What's going on? Um, it wasn't until very much later during uh, the Zoe arc uh, that we found out the name of Capone Beige's Devil Fruit. And is of course, the Shiro Shiro no Mi. Oh, okay. Okay. I got this, guys. I know Japanese. <laughs> Shiro means white, which means Beige has the white, white fruit. So yeah, I guess he has the Devil Fruit ability to refract all light around him. That's 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 how that goes. Now, okay. No, Shiro can also mean castle in Japanese. You know, more than one meaning to the word. So of course, it is the castle, castle fruit, um, which, you know, very simple, you know, in concept anyway, allows to turn the inside of his body into a castle, kind of like a pocket dimension. Um, and his Devil Fruit is not even the only Devil Fruit that allows the user to kind of create a pocket dimension inside of themselves, but it's the one that's the most elaborate. Um, the other devil fruits that exhibit this trait are the Yami Yami no Mi and the Numa Numa no Mi, uh, both of which are Logias, and the way that they absorb things is not the same way as Beijay's, because they're both more, like, assimilating into you. Like, uh, Blackbeard has the Yami Yami no Mi. He uses, like, Kura Ozu, Black Vortex, or uh, Black Hole, to suck things into this, just kind of this nebulous um, space inside of him, and then he just, it doesn't seem like he has any real control over the things inside of him, he just draws any random number of things in, and then he can expel it with liberation. Um, and then we have uh, uh, Karibo's Numa Numa no Mi, the, the swamp fruit, which allows to turn his body into mud. And, and in this case, it does seem like he does have control over what he puts in, and he could just summon it whenever. Like, he put a Gatling gun inside of his body, and he could just summon it whenever. Um, but the difference between those fruits and Beige's fruit, on top of him being a Paramecia, is that the inside space that he uh, has in his pocket dimension is an elaborate castle. It's not just some nebulous area. It's a defined space, so it doesn't go on. It's not infinite, the same way as, like, the Numa Numa or the Yami Yami might be, but it is a lot more elaborate, because you can actually store things in there, like furniture, and, uh, like, you know, you can put beds in there, and people can in there, and they could sleep, and weapons. You could store weapons in there. Um, you're basically converting your entire body into a fortress that people can live inside. Uh, and while you're inside Beige's body, uh, whatever is going on in the outside, if he's like doing jumping jacks or getting attacked by an enemy, getting knocked around or tumbling or whatever, uh, it's like gyroscopically, you know, positioned inside of this space. So no matter how much he gets knocked around on the outside, no matter what he's doing, uh, you stay upright and gravity maintains its its constant while in Beige's body. So you don't have to worry. Like if it was realistic, you know, every time Beige is walking around, you know, just going to the freaking cigar shop or going to pick out like some fine wine or whatever, if you were inside of him, you'd be like, whoa, it's a front chase. What's going on? 
you know? So you don't have to worry about that when you're inside of Beige. Um, but there are certain limitations. Whatever affects the outside does affect the inside in a way. For instance, if uh, Beige were to get shot uh, while he was in this form, it would certainly do damage to the inside of his body as well as the outside. Like, it would probably be interpreted, like, let's say Beige gets shot in the shoulder. He would be bleeding on the outside, like, oh my god, this hurts. On the inside, it would be like, you know, the dining room you know, wall would explode or something. Like, there would be, like, some physical damage to the castle as well as with his physical, you know, flesh and bone kind of body. So, it's very interesting, you know, like, how, I mean, like, do, you know, internal decorating, you know, can you just, you know, decorate it however you want? Can you rearrange the rooms? Is this, like, some Hogwarts thing? If Beige's like, you know, I don't want the dining room to be where my left lung is. I think I'm gonna move that down to my spleen area. Um, you know, so it's certainly, like, uh, there, there is a finite space, like I said, but if Beige has complete control over it, he could probably rearrange the rooms, whatever. Um, we don't really see it all that much being used in this way, because it's usually used as, like, a garrison to, uh, you know, have all the other fire tank pirates. Like, they can always be with Beige no matter where he's going. This fruit is really good as an element of surprise, as the Marines found out on Sabaondi, because, you know, you could be walking by yourself, and really he has an entire battalion, he has his entire pirate crew inside of him that are, you know, watching his every move, and they know what's going on on the outside, but the people on the outside don't know what's going on, and then they can fire, uh, like cannons or whatever outside of Beige, and uh, I should I should mention how the, uh, how the sizing thing works. So there's like an invisible perimeter around Beige, where, where his power takes effect. I would assume that whenever he chooses to activate his power, like, let's say, okay, men, time to get inside of me. Father, why do you always have to say it like that? Yeah, yeah, shut your traps, just get inside of me now. So what he would do is, you know, he would lower the drawbridge, and then anytime one of the members of his crew enter this space around him, it's just poof, and they shrink in size, and then they go inside of his castle. And then whenever they exit the space, they go back to their normal size, and this is true for people as well as with objects. So you can lower a cannon outside of, like, Beige's, like, left shoulder, fire it, and then as soon as the cannonball hits that perimeter, it goes back to regular size and, you know, everything involving like inertia and everything like that continues onward like it would be normally and then it connects and boom. Also, we don't really know how the weight difference works. I don't think that's ever mentioned. Like, do you weigh the same when you're shrunk down? Uh, because technically you're not inside of Beige's like, you know, flesh and blood body. You're in this pocket universe which has different constants of like, you know, gravity and everything. So maybe you weigh the same. Like, for instance, if you take a 20-pound cannonball and it gets shrunk down into Beige's, you know, size, even though it's super tiny, does it still weigh 20 pounds? You know, I, I don't know. It doesn't really mention it, not really brought up all that much. But anyway, what I was saying is we've never seen it being used in this way, but he could, like, trap enemy pirates inside of his castle, and if he could rearrange these rooms however he's seen fit, that would be kind of, like, interesting to see, wouldn't it? Like, some enemy pirates, like, running around, like, where am I? No, what is this crazy place? And he could just rearrange the whole thing and be like, oh, 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 you're trapped forever you're never getting out um and uh however though that is actually a weakness of the fruit uh you would think that like oh you're only getting out if i say you can get out like if i permit it but that's not the case no um because as we've seen like with sanji and nami and chopper and everybody uh when they were inside of beige's castle they were at that dining room right beige left like the front door open like he left his uh his drawbridge open so all sanji had to do was like pick up brook chopper and uh, nami and then just literally throw them out of the opening and as soon as they hit that perimeter they popped back to regular size so uh beige still has to be aware of like keeping all all entrances you know closed as well as exits you have to keep those closed uh so people just can't walk out but yeah i'm sure if he wanted to if he wanted to really trap somebody about it he wasn't really serious about you know taking them prisoner there like you know in handcuffs and chains because those weren't his orders um but if he wanted to you know keep people inside the castle, close up the drawbridge, keep all the other doors and all the uh, things you use for, like, cannonballs and just shut everything like that, and, uh, they probably, and maybe rearrange the rooms and shut doors, make sure they can't run around and get all squirrely on you, and, uh, they should probably, like, it's, it should serve as a decent prison, um, provided that they're not strong enough to actually do physical damage to the castle itself, like, it probably wouldn't work on somebody like, like, Kaido, like, he couldn't trap somebody like Kaido inside of him, Kaido would, like, rip him apart, because, you know, it, it, the castle is 
is still part of his body. So if someone was inside of him and uh, started just beating the crap out of the walls, that would, you know, do physical damage as well. In case we actually already kind of saw that with Sanji, at least a little bit, when Sanji was smoking his cigarette and he dropped it. It hit the ground inside of Beijing's body, and the, the the floor began to, like, combust, like, way more than normal from, like, hit it, because the floor appeared to be, like, stone or tile. The second the cigarette hit it, it just flared up. And Beijing's like, oh, what the hell? And he had to, like, douse the flames really quick. But it's very clear that if he didn't stop that, those flames would have covered. So, um... There's clearly weaknesses inside of his own castle, so maybe it wouldn't function as a prison all that much, now that I'm actually thinking about it. Uh, but maybe to, like, like regular pirate riffraff, probably would work just fine, but nobody of any decent kind of power level. Um, but yeah, it seems like, you know, it can be burned or damaged or something like that. You know, it's still inside of Beijing's body there. Um, other ways that he's seen using it, of course, is that, you know, he can open up, uh, it seems, anywhere on his body, uh, openings to, like, let cannon cannons through or gunmen or anything like that. You know, it can be be anywhere on his body. Uh, something else that we've seen is that BJ has the ability to actually appear inside of his own castle. Like, he can materialize, like, a fake body inside of his own castle while he's still outside, and he can communicate with the people inside of it, which is an interesting ability. Uh, and it would also seem he could do both at the same time. It would seem like, kind of, he can create, like, a sort of clone of himself, where the BJ on the outside can still move around and think and do stuff, while there's a BJ on the inside that's having a completely different conversation. So, kind of like creating maybe a, a clone of himself, like a shadow clone from Naruto that can, you know, carry on its own actions while the main Beige, his real body, is moving around. So, that's cool there. Um, it seems to be made out of, like, some kind of, like, goopy, ethereal substance. It probably doesn't exhibit. Like, there's no, there's no infinity castle here. Like, the Beige he creates inside of his castle also has a castle, and that one also has a little Beige. you know. So, it's probably just, like, a representation to carry on conversations with people inside of his own, uh, inside of his own castle. Uh, and we've seen how he decorates, too. He puts up pictures of himself all over the dining room. Beige is, of course, somebody that... He's a mafia don, so he's somebody that really cares about the finesse and, you know, his, uh, his attire and the appearance and everything like that. So, uh, the castle is very neat. It's very clean. It's, it looks like something that you would see a mafia don owning, and, you know, so it, it is a very pristine-looking place. And so, uh, as far as actually, like, named abilities go, uh, Beige's only got two of them. And there's only really only one of them that he's shown to be able to use while he's currently in like his uh, his flesh and blood body with like his you know castle inside of him and that's castle tank which allows him to turn the lower half of his body into tank treads that he can move at a high speed you know so he can escape from enemies or do whatever um kind of an kind of an interesting feature you know turning the lower half of your body into tank treads, uh, cause the whole point of your fruit is, like, a fortress or a castle. Most castles that I've seen pictures of, like, this one, or this one, or that one, or, oh, hey, look, it's Crawford Castle! Oh, good old Scotland. Someday I'll make a trip to my ancestral homeland. Um, but no, most castles that I've seen pictures of don't have giant tank treads on the bottom of them. Um, so, I don't know. It makes more sense from what another ability that we're going to see in a second, uh, but it's just a weird aesthetic choice. Uh, and it also brings up an interesting question. Could Beige add things to his castle? Like, when he eats the fruit and he first accessed the, for the, the, the castle castle fruit, I would imagine the castle he entered was, like, barren. Like, there was nothing in it, there was no furniture, there was nothing. And then it was just, like, you know, maybe a big empty castle that he could maybe rearrange to his liking, and then over the years of having the fruit, he decorated it the way that he saw fit. So, th that could be the situation there, and then maybe he could add stuff to it, like, physically on top of just, uh, you know, decorating it with, like, the pictures of himself or the dining room tables, he could maybe bring in, like, a tank inside of his castle. Like, having a tank in the castle and then utilizing his fruit, he can take any aspect inside of his castle and add it to his physical body. So taking the tank treads from the tank that he brought into the castle and make his lower body those tank treads. Maybe that would be the case. Uh, if, if that was the situation, though, you'd think he would also be able to, like, spawn weapons whenever. Like, he can bring, like, a, an axe into the castle and then he'd be like, CASTLE AXE! And then just turn his arm into an axe. 
It'd be better than Morgan, I'm just saying. Uh, we never seen him exhibit kind of abilities like that, but it is kind of weird that his fruit is a castle and he could summon tank treads. You know, most... Uh, no castles have tank treads. I'm just going to throw that out there now, except Beige. Beige is the only one. Um, but maybe it makes sense when you look at another ability he has, and this is like his, his ultimate attack, I guess, so to speak. It is sort of an attack, but it's also... His Devil Fruit focuses mainly on defense, from what you've probably seen so far. Um, the whole idea of a castle or a fortress is to prevent, like, an enemy army from getting in so defense is a big part of his fruit but we saw this when you know he was at the tea party and the assassination plot on big mom got botched and he's like there's there's you know all of his allies around him like the germa and the straw hats and everybody and his own fire tank crew and they're surrounded by the enemy so he's like all right we need a place where we can regroup um so he does this raises up his like his fingers like this like yeah and then uh he activates big father which takes the castle from the outside from the inside of his body and makes it a physical space on the outside, transforming his entire body into, um... Howl's Moving Castle, basically. If we're just making a comparison, there we go. The castle, uh, whereas, you know, when he was in his normal human form, he could have castle as aspects like the drawbridge and the cannons and the, and the tank treads and everything. While he goes into Big Father, uh, it's a castle that has human features. So he has, like, his face on it and his eyeballs, and he's, like, still smoking a big stone cigar and everything like that. Um, and he can move his body around like normal, so his arms are now, like, uh, like, uh, cannons that he can fire off and i'm assuming in this form we don't really I, I went back and looked at the chapter where he uses this we don't get to see his feet all that much while he's in his castle form but i'm going to assume that his feet are the tank treads and he can move around um as soon as he uses this ability Pero sparrow uses his candy to kind of you know lock him into place so he can't move uh but i would assume that's where the tank tread thing comes from it's like on the bottom of this castle so he can like move around while he's in castle form um this castle has a huge bolster in defense, Beige himself that stated that normal cannon fire wouldn't even be able to phase him while he's in this form, um, but Big Mom's attacks were able to, which means that, like, Big Mom is, that's just, that's just a testament to how strong, how freakishly strong she is, uh, but normal attacks wouldn't do anything, um, he boasts its defenses are huge, uh, it can still be affected by outside things, so if the cannons, um, get all gunked up, like with Mochi, with Katakuri, he can't fire them, um, so it does seem like there's a limit with this. Uh, the castle itself, I would assume, is just as big on, like, as big as it is on the inside, it is on the outside. So this is, like, the full scale of what the space Beige has to work with on the inside of him. So, like I said, definitely not an infinite space, um, but certainly enough to get the job done. Uh, he also states that while there are people inside of his castle even if he transforms back and like the whole tumbling thing, like the gravity will stay constant and everything and like everything will stay gyroscopically where it is. So even if he's in his giant castle form in the physical world and then turns himself all of a sudden back into a human, everybody will still stay where they are. So this is actually really efficient. Like he can hurry up, you know, if he has to hurry up and get people in instead of going one at a time, you know, shrinking you down, he can literally turn himself into a giant castle. Everybody runs in at a time over the drawbridge closes the drawbridge up, turns back into a regular human, and then he's got, like, an entire battalion inside of him, and everything stays right where it is. Nobody gets, like, tossed around or anything, so, uh, pretty cool, so... Yeah. Um, other than that, we haven't seen him use any other abilities uh, in terms of his castle. It seems like mostly cannon fire, and it heavily relies on the people that are inside of you. Uh, while he does have attacks like him himself, like a big strength of the fruit is having uh, the fighting force inside of you to jump out and take your enemies by surprise. Uh, keep in mind, though, that despite having the tank tread things, uh, there are limits to where the castle can go. Uh, Beige still has his own ship that the fire tank pirates are usually on and sailing, so that would probably mean, I'm, I'm assuming the castle doesn't have, like, um, jet skis and shit on it. Like, he could be, you know, skiing around the ocean. It can't fly. And that might seem like a stupid thing to say, like, well, no shit, Matt, the castle can't fly. But the second he turned into that giant castle, how else were, I was thinking, how else are they going to get down from Whole Cake Plateau? I was like, could it fly? Like, you know, whatever. I don't know. Maybe he has, like, like a jet pack on the damn thing. I don't know. Um, 
But yeah, it's certainly a very uh, unusual fruit. Uh, when we first saw it, we were like wondering what it was. But actually, actually, you break it down. It's really not all that complicated. Uh, really interesting fruit. I'm going to be making a discussion video about Beige in general coming up in my Supernova series. Uh, in fact, actually, let me check right now to see uh, where we're at with that. I think the next video I'm doing is a Rouge, uh, followed by Bonnie, followed by Apu, then Beige. So Beige is going to be the fifth video in this series I'm going to be doing. So his is going to be coming up. And I'll go in more into depth into his character and, you know, his relationships with everybody and his wife and his son and, and you know, everything like that. This is just a video specifically for his uh, Devil Fruit power. Uh, but what do you guys think of the Castle Castle Fruit? Would this be an ability that you would like to have? What are some clever ways that you can maybe use it that I haven't mentioned in this video? Uh, like I said, it would be really cool to keep something in the castle and just spawn it uh, on your body however you would like to. Uh, that would be pretty neat. And like I said, if it's Castle Tank is really just an inherent ability of the fruit, what other wacky stuff could he do? You know, like the, the castle jet ski, castle jet pack. I mean, I was just joking, but maybe, maybe it could fly if you made the necessary adjustments to it. I don't know. Um, but also, uh, bottom line, primarily a defensive fruit. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Later, everybody.